Right. So welcome everyone to the weekly current affairs and this will be, we'll be covering 14th September 2022 till the 21st of September 2022. Now I'm well aware that um, a little bit of um, most of the things from 14th to 17th have been dealt with by your teachers uh, regardless. If there are certain things that we've not dealt with, we'll deal with that. And mostly we'll be focusing from 18th to 21st of September, 2022. So let's begin with the first one. Uh, good evening, good evening. So the very first one is doctors got just 20% of the insurance money, which they were supposed to get under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan package. Now, as all of us are aware, there were a lot of health workers who died fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. And hence in 2020, our government came up with the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan package insurance scheme. So Pradhan Mantri Garib, Garib Kalyan package involves a lot of other things, but we are focusing on the insurance scheme over here. So this particular scheme was basically, class was not visible on the page. Uh, right, Prashant. So we have just begun for the ones who have just entered. Let me just uh, clarify this again. So we'll be dealing with weekly current affairs on every Wednesday from now on. Now I'm well aware that from the 14th till the 17th of September, your teachers have dealt with, um, with these current affairs topics. In case there is something that we've not dealt with, we'll deal with them right now. But mostly we'll be covering 18 September to 21st. So you also have to be uh, very, very active in telling me what has been done has not been done. Is that okay? So the very first thing that we were discussing, let me start it off again, is that we were talking about the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan package insurance scheme. Now, this particular insurance scheme is introduced, obviously, it was introduced in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic and because of the fact that a lot of health workers died fighting COVID-19 in our country. So keeping that in mind, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the ones who are online live right now, I'd like to ask you, who is the Cabinet Minister of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare? Right, Bache. Who is the Cabinet Minister of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare? Come on, we know it. Starts with M. Okay. So I'll be waiting for you. Yes, yes, I'm so glad. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so there'll be a couple of things that I would like you to do on your own. And most of it we'll be dealing with uh, over here so that we can do a lot in less time. So now this particular insurance scheme, personal accident scheme, was a cover of 50 lakh to over 22 lakh healthcare providers, right? Which not only included the community healthcare workers, also the private health workers. And the scheme covers a loss of life due to COVID-19 or any accidental death on account of COVID-19 related duty. Now, if you talk about um, this particular scheme, it was supposed to end, but it was um, extended by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So it is going to be there till the October. Now, the news that we have read over here is doctors have just got 20% of the insurance money, right? So this particular scheme involved all the government centers, healthcare centers and wellness centers, the ones that we've read in Ayushman Bharat mission, right? and also the private sector. So central government, state government, and also private healthcare workers. Let's go ahead. The next one is that China has blocked the listing of Luxur's commander at the UN Security Council. Now, what has happened is China has blocked a joint uh, attempt made by India and the US. They wanted to put this Pakistan-based terrorist on the UN Security Council's 1,267 list, so 1267 committee. Now, basically, what is this 1267 committee? It is a list of terrorists. It's a global list. And it comprises of all permanent and non-permanent members of the UN Security Council who come together and who make a list of all the terrorists in the world. 
So it limits the movement of these terrorists primarily. And secondly, how do you list a terrorist on this? So any member state can submit a proposal for listing a person, an individual, a group or an entity. And they have to show whether that a group or that individual or that entity was actually financing or planning or facilitating, preparing or doing any activities which are related to terrorism. So this ISIL is basically the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Now, basically, why is this in news is because China has blocked the listing of Sajid Mir on this 1267 committee. Sajid Mir, if we were to talk about him, that he's been already jailed for over 15 years in the month of June by the Pakistani um, court. And that was so that they could get off the uh, gray list of the FATF, Financial Action Task Force. Apart from that, Sajid Mir was someone who was the mastermind behind the November 2008 terrorist attacks in Mumbai. Apart from this, in the month of June of this year, there was a joint proposal made by India and the US for the listing of Abdul Rahman Maki. But China put a hold on that too. So basically, this listing is made by virtue of a consensus. Consensus means everybody has to say yes. So you can put a technical hold on a proposal uh, to ask for more information of a particular person. But Sajid Mir has been blocked, right? So this is the next one. So we'll quickly go ahead. The next thing we are talking about is new rules for child welfare panel members. So firstly, we'll try and understand this. But the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Amendment uh, or Juvenile Justice Act becomes your homework. Is that OK? So you will go figure out what does this talk about? Um, which age group are they talking about um, when they say that they will be tried as adults? Who will decide who, which age group uh, children can be tried as an adult? And what kind of offenses are they dealing with? So basically, these are new rules for the Child Welfare Committee. So firstly, we'll understand what is the Child Welfare Committee, and then we will go on to this. So Child Welfare Committee is made under Section 27, Clause 1. You don't have to learn the section, the clause number, but section you can. I, I don't really think they will go that um, into so many details, but still we should know that Child Welfare Committee comes under the Juvenile Justice Act. So basically, this committee is to be constituted by a state government for every district. And what is the I mean, what is the purpose behind this committee? They are going to take care of children who are in need and who need protection under this particular act. And this committee consists of a chairperson, four other members, as the state government may deem fit, of whom at least one should be a woman. The eligibility written over here is 35 years of age, minimum seven years of experience of working with children in the field of education, health, welfare activities, a degree in child psychology or psychiatry, right? Or in the field of law or a judicial officer. Now, the, this particular thing has been changed by the recent rules of 2022. We'll just come to that, right? Um, so what have they amended? Before the amendment, there's another thing that I'd like to talk about is, we say we will talk about it when we talk about the Ebal Nidan portal, which is also in news, but there is something known as the National Commission for Protection of Children, right? So the National Commission, ma'am, Isru wala jo aaj padne aapne padaya tha, wo ek bar aur bata dije. Brinda, wo end mein kar lenge, bache. Ham logo ne S. Somnath ke baare mein baat ki thi. Abhi hum log iske baare mein thoda sa karke end mein aap mein se poosh ki jega. So, uh, what will we dealing with? National Commission for the Protection of Child Rights. Chalo, jab wo aayega e bal nidan, tab uske baare mein baat kar lenge. Abhi idhar focus karte hain. So, this particular committee is tasked with uh, dealing with children who have been abused, exploited, abandoned or orphaned. So, what are the new rules, 2022 rules that they have come up with? So, the first thing is, they say whoever is the chairman or a member of this committee it will never be uh, somebody or a part of an organization that is receiving any foreign contributions. So, if I have an organization that is receiving any foreign contributions, Anyone from my organization, none of them can become a chairperson or a member of such a committee. That's A. B. So they say, if I'm working uh, for the implementation of the Juvenile Justice Act or I'm under any NGO which is working 
um, for the implementation of the Juvenile Justice Act. So I will be ineligible to be a member of this particular committee. The next one is anyone who's working in such organizations, a close relation or any family member will also be disqualified to be a part of this committee, right? A person representing someone running a child care institution or a member of or the board of any NGO who is working for a similar cause will not be a member of this welfare committee because there can be a conflict of interest and retired judicial officers have also been omitted from this category so this is what is new for us the next one is like i've already spoken about that the child welfare committee comes under the juvenile justice act they can inquire into the safety and well-being of any child and they can also order for the rehabilitation of such children uh, the next thing that we are going to talk about is the Inspire Award Manak. Now, firstly, when we talk about the Inspire Award, um, this is basically a cluster of a lot of awards. Bache. So it is to do with people from 10 to 32 years of age. So, for example, they will also give awards to faculties uh, for fellowship, for scholarships. So right now, the one that we are dealing with is Manak. Manak is with respect to little children, basically the ones who are from 6 to 10 standard. So 10 to 15 years of age group, this is the age group that we are talking about. So what is the full form of Manak? Millions, minds, augmenting national aspiration and knowledge. Achha, before I go ahead, I'd like to tell you by the end of this entire session, I'll be giving you two passage-based questions and we'll be dealing with those questions in this particular session itself. So see it very, very carefully so that we are able to answer it by the end of it, okay? So this particular award is given, it is aligned with Startup India. What is it given for? It is given for innovative ideas. If this particular age group, 10 to 15 years, class 6 to 10 standard, if these kids come up with any original idea, any innovative idea, where they're using science and technology, so then we can commemorate them. Uh, obviously, you can see it on the screen that it is being given to 50,000 students. So you don't have to learn the names of those 50,000 students, right? But this Department of Science and Technology, you could tell me this, that which um, minister is dealing with this Department of Science and Technology, Bache, Fata Fatse. Uh, when is next Nikhil Sir's class? Again, so this is for you and everyone else. But uh, please call up the office and ask. I am not somebody who makes the schedule, yes. But I'm sure it will be the next time, Sudhanshu. But I'm not the right person to ask because I'm not making the schedule. So you can ask Clad Possible and they will definitely let you know that. Is that okay, Bache? Okay. So, so this is your Manak Award. And we should also keep in mind that this is the ninth edition of these Inspire Awards. So let's go ahead. The next one is National Technical Textiles Mission. Now, if we talk about the National Technical Textiles Mission, firstly, this was launched in 2020 to make India a global leader in technical textiles and to improve their usage. Now, what is technical textile? As you can read on your screens, technical textiles are defined as te textile materials which are going to increase the performance and the functional property rather than their aesthetic and decorative characteristics. So, zada sundar banane ke liye ye wale technical textiles nahi hote, zada robust banane ke liye inko hum use karte hai. So, ab government ne kya kiya hai? The government has launched projects under the National Technical Textile Mission in at least 23 strategic research projects. Now, among these 23 research projects, there will be 12 of them are uh, dealing with agriculture, smart textiles, healthcare, strategic application, you know, protective headgear, so that you can make such a helmet, you don't feel good, you don't feel but protect your uh, head. Ko. You know, in this way, se agricultural input, uh, which we machinery utilize machinery, whether or not it looks pretty is a different deal altogether. It should be robust so that, you know, um, it has a lot of durability and a person is able to use it for a very long time in the same manner for healthcare services. Geotextile or geotechnical is basically your engineering behavior of your earth materials. So 23 research projects is what we have to keep in mind. National technical textile mission is what we have to keep in mind. And also you could tell me who is the minister of textiles, Bache? 
who is the cabinet minister of minister ministry of textiles chalo ji homework ho gaya p se naam hai socho soch ke bata dena yes so ministry of textiles ka cabinet minister becomes your deal bache so we have less time and we have a lot to do so i am going to put some things on you and we are going to go do some things together is that okay everyone so ministry of textile cabinet minister becomes important bahut baar naam suna hai aapne inka you will figure it out and you will write it in your notebooks so presently if we talk about it with respect to the technical textile we india shares only 6% of the world market and we need to grow that even more the next one is kritagya 3.0 now kritagya k r i stands for krishi t a stands for takneek and g y a stands for gyan so takneeki gyan for krishi agricultural technology knowledge for agricultural technology and what are we doing it's a hackathon 3.0 which is being uh, organized by the indian council of agricultural research with its national agricultural higher education so what are they trying to do they want you to figure out um, new methodologies by virtue of which we can improve the quality of our seeds so what is happening right now is there's a lot of fragmentation of land obviously the land that used to belong to one person now if he has four sons it will be divided into four parts those four sons have four more sons it will be divided into even more parts so the smaller my land gets the more i want my seed quality to be so that the efficiency of my product increases now we can't possibly rely on genetically modified crops because the only genetically modified crop that we are utilizing these days is bt cotton and nothing more than that because we do not know how it's going to interact with our body so this particular um, hackathon is going to involve a lot of people and you can come up with different different technologies on how to make our seeds even better now this particular thing is even more important why because of the seed treaty and because of the fact that india is involved in that c treaty and it is the summit is happening in new delhi to uske bare mein baat kar lete hain the next thing is your seed treaty now india is hosting the ninth session of the governing body of the c treaty so c treaty is also known as the international treaty of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture now it is a legally binding international agreement to conserve to use and to manage the plant genetic resources so we'll understand plant genetic resources in the sense if there is some type of a hybrid seed that we have come up with we should get rights over it what kind of rights we will just understand but as of now in this is happening in new delhi this is going to happen from the 19th till the 24th of september 2022 and india is leading uh, the faction of farmers rights so we are really really promoting farmers rights you know after the covid pandemic the summits were not really happening even then india and switzerland together they were coming up with systems to um, to take forward the farmers rights okay and also we are talking about capacity building now um when was this particular treaty adopted it was adopted in 2001 by the un food and agricultural organization rome italy mein iska headquarter hai and it came into force in 2004 kiska headquarter hai food and agricultural organization ka now india is very much a part of it and what is the treaty trying to aim it is recognizing the contribution of farmers to the diversity of the crops perennial perennial crops ho gaye hybrid seeds ho gaye and all of that so it provides access to plant genetic materials and it it's talking about mostly 64 of our most important crops now the act by virtue of which we are giving a lot of importance to farmer rights and to genetic material and to breeders right is called the protection of plant varieties and farmers act of 2001 
so it is recognizing the contribution of both commercial plant breeders and farmers in the plant breeding activity what are the kind of rights that we have so if i am the one who come who has come up with this technology of this innovative idea of this innovative crop so i am a breeder and i am the one who has the exclusive right to produce sell market it in case somebody else wants it they have to pay me a lot of money and only and only when i want to give my technology will i do it apart from that researchers rights then farmers right that they can save and use and sow re-sow exchange share and sell but not branded seed because it's already been branded by someone else right and uh, the farmers right point is the one that india is advocating in the c treaty because of the summit that is happening in new delhi then we come on to the sova virus attack so now the sova virus attack is basically an application in case we are you know and it comes under fake android application names and displaying logos of legitimate applications like chrome ka ho gaya amazon ka ho gaya non fungible token lag ke hame lag raha hai and the minute we download it this particular malware it is capturing all my credentials for example it is it is it knows my bank account it knows my cvv number it knows my credit card number my debit card number so you can well imagine the kind of financial fraud that can take place so earlier on it was just happening this particular sova virus was only taking place in in countries like us and russia and of late it has come to india also so um, a little bit of what is a malware uh i'm sure you know this more than me you know you come from a generation where digital uh, knowledge is is much much more than anyone from my generation actually i can't really talk about everyone from my generation at least me but otherwise if you are like me so we can talk about it a little bit so like a malware is basically a software which is designed to perform unwanted or illegal activity on your computer or any digital devices there are of plenty plenty categories one of them is trojan to jaise trojan horse bolte hai na ki you do not know where it comes from but once it's there it has access to all your secure networks then there are also hoax emails that we can get or a spy where which is monitoring my user activity without my consent so all of that so the thing that we have to keep in mind is sova virus and also that it is basically targeting bank customers under legitimate names so the indian computer emergency response team is working towards it and giving us safe advisory on how to avoid such a such a virus attack now the next thing that we have to keep in mind is um since we know that the shanghai cooperation organization summit is taking place and it is taking place in uzbekistan samarkand other uh, the question that i'd like to ask you is that is the rotational presidency is it already handed over to india or not yes right okay theek hai so isme kya hai china's uh, president xi jinping he made a mention of something known as color revolutions and he was basically talking about hong kong but then this term becomes important for us and let's just understand what are color revolutions now color revolutions are basically uprisings that used to take place that have taken place in former communist nations right and uh, which are basically talking about oh you know the elections are taking place but they are rigged elections or everyone from your family is you know getting elected again rigged elections look at the amount of inflation unemployment we want democracy we do not want this type of a government so there are different different color revolutions that have taken place now let's talk about the orange revolution acha before we go ahead whichever country we are talking about over here but we really need to know the president now ukraine ka president to aapko pata hai uska spelling bhi i'm sure aapko pata hai right um, because of the fact that it came in the paper but apart from that each and every country you need to know the president you need to know the capital and you also need to know the currency will you be able to do that yes i mean you have to theek <laughs> hai the president the capital the currency just give me a yes that we'll do this so that i am i can rest assured that this particular section will be done by you good theek hai 
so now when we talk about the color revolutions the first one is your orange revolution okay so this took place in ukraine and again they basically said that the elections were rigged okay it happened in 2004 in the presidential elections if you talk about the tulip revolution this was related to kyrgyzstan and in that too you know um, a particular family everyone from a particular family won the elections and the people were like you know what is happening and we do not want such rigged elections in our country jasmine revolution on the other hand was in tunisia and it was um, it led to the ouster of the pres then president ben ali because they said that he was indulging in a lot of corruption unemployment was at an all time high there was a lot of inflation and lack of political freedom in the country and lastly is the rose revolution rose revolution is basically in georgia because this was against a massive electoral fraud and economic decline so we can understand we can understand that all of this at the end of the day is to do with the fact that we need free and fair elections and also to do with the fact that there's a lot of inflation and all of that so now that we know it we need to know the color and color revolution i mean basically the color and what is it related to which country is it related to all right okay now let's go on to the next one ambedkar circuit ab ye sabko pata hoga when was ambedkar born which year also known as the arab spring han ji when was ambedkar born ye to aapke question bhi aaya tha yaar मॉक में एंड आई एम श्योर आपको करवाया है आपके टीचर्स ने बताओ 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 ओके आई गिव यू ऑप्शन 1890 यस राइट गुड वेल डन सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द अंबेडकर सर्किट सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज Ambedkar circuit was not something that was um, organized or which was um, conceptualized right now. It was conceptualized in two thousand sixteen, and it would cover certain basic, very very prime locations related to the life of B R Ambedkar. Uh, firstly, we'll understand what is the term of Panch Tirath. So Panch Tirath is basically it includes uh, the birthplace, the place of education, the place where B R Ambedkar ji he uh, adopted Buddhism, the place of his demise and his cremation place. So the other is in Mumbai. We all know that, right? Uh, but of course, you know when you talk about the Ambedkar circuit. So right now the Ministry of Tourism and Culture have basically said that we are going to introduce this under the Bharat Darshan scheme, and uh, it will obviously not include London, but the rest of the places will be in. included and uh, this will start i mean they've started working on it and uh, swadesh darshan scheme is basically a, a central sector scheme this was introduced in 2014 and this is just to give impetus to tourism and also domestic as well as international tourism and so it includes a lot of tourist circuits like the buddha circuit or the coastal circuit your ramayan circuit uh, tribal circuit krishna circuit सो so, ये सारे के सारे आ गए इसमें एक आपका अंबेडकर सर्किट भी आ गया एंड आई थिंक वी अंडरस्टूड वी नीड टू नो द नेम्स ऑफ दीज प्लेसेस एसोसिएटेड विद द बर्थ एंड द प्लेस ऑफ एजुकेशन बुद्धिज्म कन्वर्जन प्लेस ऑफ डिमाइस एंड द क्रिमेशन प्लेस लेट्स गो अहेड ओके सो द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज नेशनल लॉजिस्टिक्स पॉलिसी अब नेशनल लॉजिस्टिक्स पॉलिसी की अगर हम बात करें बेसिकली वॉट इज लॉजिस्टिक्स सो लॉजिस्टिक्स उस चीज को बोलते हैं जिससे हमारी चीज ढंग से समय से हमारे टाइम हमारे पास पहुंच जाए सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन एवर वी आर ऑर्डर इन समथिंग ऑन एमेजॉन द फैक्ट दैट दे आर सेइंग यू नो द एस्टिमेटेड टाइम ऑफ डिलीवरी इज दिस मच सो दिस इज बेसिकली टू डू विथ लॉजिस्टिक्स यू नो सो दी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द मूवमेंट एंड द इक्विपमेंट एंड द अकोमोडेशन ऑफ द गुड्स so if we talk about india we have just introduced the national logistics policy and we say that the logistics cost in india is about 13 to 14% you know it is very very high as compared to other developed countries and rightly so because of the fact that you know right now we are looking into making our roads and making them 
proper and once we do that is when we would have looked into the logistics policy and now is the time to do it after the gati shakti portal and the bharat mala pro- program the sagar mala program the railways we've looked into and now our focus should be on the national logistics policy so basically this will provide employment to more than 22 million people and it is expected to grow at a rate of 10.5% over the next 5 years and the aim is to just reduce the cost of the logistics sector to 10% in the next 5 years since right now it is 13 to 14% all right let's go ahead so gati shakti and all we we understand right gati shakti portal hame pata hai national monetization pipeline hame pata hai bharat mala is basically new highways sagar mala is to do with your coastline and the portland development the hinterland development and of course the freight corridors next is death penalty so there was an editorial on death penalty you know it that death penalty in our country is given in the rarest of the rare cases and it is given in the rarest of the rare cases only and only because we are jurisprudence says that we have to um, abide by the reformative theory tabhi hamare jail ko bhi sudhar ghar bolte hain correct <clears throat> so basically the supreme court has referred this to the constitutional bench and they have said we have to make sure that whenever we are giving a death penalty to somebody we have to look at the mitigating circumstances we have to give a basic idea to the trial judge ki kis reason mein kis wajah se hum death penalty denge aur kab hum wo death penalty ko kam karenge kyunki hum rarest of the rare cases mein death penalty dena pasand karte hain ab iske alawa agar hum baat kare तो अ वैल्यूएबल राइट सो द मिटिगेटिंग फैक्टर्स इन अ डेथ पेनल्टी केस इज अ वैल्यूएबल राइट टू अूमन बींग वॉट आर द मिटिगेटिंग फैक्टर्स एज यू कैन सी इट ऑन योर स्क्रीन द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ अ रिफॉर्म ऑफ अ पर्सन अगर एक इंसान रिफॉर्म करने लायक है तो हम उसको डेथ पेनल्टी नहीं देंगे इफ यू ऑल नो अबाउट एक्टिस रियस एंड मैं रिया आई एम श्योर पोटेंशियल लॉयर्स राइट सो उसका मेंटल हेल्थ हमें देखना पड़ेगा क्यों उसने वो क्राइम किया ग्रेव एंड सडन प्रोवोकेशन था कि नहीं था उसका मोटिव क्या था ऑल दो मोटिव इतना देखते नहीं है इंटेंशन देखते हैं बट स्टिल माछी सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब दिस सेड यू शुड आल्सो लुक एट द मोटिव द सिवेरिटी ऑफ द क्राइम द विक्टिम ऑफ द क्राइम बच्चन सिंह वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब वॉज द वन दैट ब्रॉट आउट द डॉक्टर इन ऑफ द रेरेस्ट ऑफ द रेयर केसेज सो देर आर प्लेंटी ऑफ जजमेंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट आई एम ओनली कंपाइलिंग दोज दैट वो मैंशन इन योर न्यूज पेपर्स राइट ओके तो ये हो गया डेथ पेनल्टी के बाद फिर आ जाते हैं मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स नोटिफिकेशन ऑन कॉन्विक्ट बायोमेट्रिक्स so we all know about the criminal procedure identification act of 2022 and we also understand the controversy that was related to that so we all know whenever an act is made the rules have to be made by the executive to put it into action right so now of late we've got the rules now what are these rules talking about so the very first thing that they are saying is um the adopted for convicted uh, persons that is not mentioned in the rules right but they have also said that in case you know you put somebody in preventive detention now you all realize that preventive detention is when i am a threat i am considered as a threat to national security and sometimes you see it might happen that you know i am not actually a threat but i was just perceived as a threat to national security so they have said whenever somebody is under preventive detention we will take their uh, samples only and only when they they have committed a very very serious offense <coughs> or it is ordered by the court of law then the national crime record bureau it will also direct the state on how to collect and store the information and they have also said that this storage of information will be encrypted because this, this is the basic problem that people were having is what if there's a data leak so encrypted basically means that it will be safe and be used only for the purpose that it has been taken for and apart from that you know no unauthorized access or distribution or sharing of data will take place so um, this will be very very nice you know it will put a lot of our problems to bay the ones that we had with this particular act 
मेजरमेंट्स इंक्लूड फिंगरप्रिंट्स ये सब आपने कर रखा है क्योंकि आपने वो बिल भी पढ़ रखा है आपके पास बहुत बार इसके बारे में क्वेश्चन भी आया हुआ है बट इन केस वी डू नॉट नो इट वी कैन रीड इट फ्रॉम हियर सो फिंगर इम्प्रेशन पाम प्रिंट फुट प्रिंट फोटोग्राफ आयरस रेटना स्कैन फिजिकल बायोलॉजिकल सैम्पल्स ऑब्वियसली विल नॉट बी टेकन फोर्सफुली अनलेस यू कमिटेड अ क्राइम अगेंस्ट अ वुमेन और अ चाइल्ड or an offense where the punishment is more than 7 years your behavioral attributes so on and so forth then comes your swachh sujal pradesh so india's first swachh sujal pradesh certification has been given to the andaman and nicobar islands who has given it the jal shakti ministry and what can we talk about all of this jal shakti ministry ka minister batao fatafat se who is the cabinet minister of the jal shakti ministry vidya very good good apurva and lalit theek hai bachche so the certification is provided for ensuring three things one is safe and secure drinking water supply then open defecation free plus status and awareness about cleanliness and conversions of all the schemes all the villages of andaman and nicobar islands have received har ghar jal certification which is very very nice right and uh, which basically aims to give every rural household in the country um portable tap water supply by 2024 to hamare liye important kya hai first swachh sujal pradesh certification has been given to whom andaman and nicobar islands kaun si ministry involved hai wo to bahut easy hai jal shakti ministry and drinking water supply should be safe and secure open defecation free plus and cleanliness awareness amongst the people then is the indian swachhta league so basically this is um, a sort of like a competition that is being conducted all over the country this is under the ministry of housing and urban affairs and what is happening is people are getting involved citizen participation to clean their cities and to make them uh, garbage free and green right so swachh amrit mahotsav it's a fortnight of activities this is started on the 17th of september and it is going to go on till the 2nd of october 2022 to commemorate gandhi jayanti and what are we going to do we are going to just clean our locality so that our city gets like a commemorative award right apart from that this comes under the swachh bharat mission urban 2.0 which was announced in the 2021 to 22 budget and this talks about the following things so the aims this is right there on your screen one is to make our cities garbage free second is to ensure grey and black water man management black water is waste water from the toilets while grey water is waste water from the sinks and uh, um atal this amrut mission is basically atal modernization and revamping of certain urban areas right so smart city mission is the top tier cities and then comes amrut this also comes under the same ministry making all urban local bodies odf plus and those with less than 1 lakh population odf double plus so odf plus to uh, talks about deals with toilets with water and maintenance and hygiene facility and odf double plus focuses on toilets with sludge and septage management and the timeline is till 2026 so indian swachhta league till 2nd of october 2022 okay right next is your changes in the insolvency and bankruptcy code um now the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india uh iske chairman hai dr navrang uh, saini बट ये कौन सी मिनिस्ट्री के अंदर आता है आई बी बी आई क्या फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री के अंदर आता है कि मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स के अंदर आता है दैट बिकम्स योर होमवर्क बेसिकली आई बी सी इज अ लॉ बाई वर्चुअ विच इससे पहले सरफासी एक्ट करके होता था सिक्योरिटाइजेशन एंड एसिड रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एसिड्स एंड सिक्योरिटी इंटरेस्ट एक्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सिंपल भाषा में अगर लोन लेके कोई कोलेट्रल दिया है पैसा वापस नहीं दिया है तो हम आपका कोलेट्रल बेच देंगे after which in 2016 we made the insolvency and bankruptcy code wherein we said yaar sabse pehla action should not be selling of the collateral we should also give a chance to the debtor to pay back his particular um loan so what we did was we made this act and we came up with a concept of committee of creditors now under the committee of creditors what happens is if a lot of uh, yeah so if a lot of 
ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस इफ लॉर्ड ऑफ बैंक्स कंजोर्टियम लेंडिंग किया है बहुत सारे बहुत सारे बैंक्स ने बहुत ही बड़ा लोन दिया है एक पर्टिकुलर डेटर कंपनी को तो हम क्या करते हैं हम इन सब की एक कमेटी बना देते हैं कमेटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स बना देते हैं और फिर ये डेटर कंपनी की जो मैनेजमेंट है उनको बोलते हैं कि आप घर बैठ जाओ आपकी मैनेजमेंट कोई और करेगा वो कौन करेगा दैट पर्सन विल बी एन इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल नाउ दिस इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल कम्स फ्रॉम बेसिकली इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कंपनी सेक्रेटरीज ऑफ इंडिया और इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट ऑफ इंडिया और इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कॉस्ट अकाउंटेंट ऑफ इंडिया ये कुछ ऐसी एजेंसीज हैं इनमें से कोई एजेंसी में से एक प्रोफेशनल आएगा एंड ऑफकोर्स नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्राइब्यूनल इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड ओवर हियर दे विल बी दन हुल बी अपॉइंटिंग दैम वॉट विल दिस इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल डू टू थिंग्स either they will come and tell the creditors it is more profitable to run this company or they will say end this company and then liquidate this company and sell off the assets and take back your money so this insolvency resolution professional is uh, usually given 270 but we have changed that to 330 days jiske andar he has to come up with this plan and he has to go back and he has to go and tell these committee of creditors हाँ ये जरूर है क्योंकि पैसा इनका फंसा है तो ए बी सी डी विल ओनली डिसाइड वेदर टू रन द कंपनी और वेदर टू एंड द कंपनी सो दिस इज द बेसिक थिंग अबाउट इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक कोड नाउ व्हाट आर दे सेइंग इन दिस इन दीज चेंजेस सो दे आर सेइंग इफ देर इज नो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान द क्रेडिटर्स कैन सेल देर एसेट्स सेपरेटली राइट सो यू डोंट हैव टू बी लाइक ए बी सी डी को साथ में मिलकर कोई प्लान पहले करना होता था एंड एवरी वन हैड टू स्टिक टू दैट प्लान नाउ वी आर सींग इफ देर इज नो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान माइट इज एल गो एंड सेल दी एसिड सेपरेटली एंड गेट योर मनी आउट ऑफ इट सेकेंडली इज द रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल सो द परफॉर्मेंस बेस्ड पे स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ प्रोफेशनल इट इज If he is able to revive that debtor, अभी हमारी वो जो कंपनी थी the prime objective of IBC, of course, is to get back money to the creditors, but also to make sure that the debtors, you know, their business does not stop. So we will try to save that company as far as possible. In case it isn't, that's a different deal altogether. So we are going to pay this resolution professional according to the performance that he has given. about ibc like i just told you that in 2016 this particular law was made uh, the insolvency bankruptcy board of india is important for us so this is obviously a statutory body made under this code and um, navrang saini is the head right now you have to figure out which ministry does it come under the ministry of corporate affairs or does it come under ministry of finance very easily you will find that out apart from that there was an amendment in 2021 for the msme sector which is registered as an msme right there are plenty of unregistered msmes also so um, in this entire thing that i just made um, the resolution plan is basically made by the resolution professional and then approved by the committee on creditors in this particular resolution process we told the msme sector that listen if you are unable to pay back the banks you make the plan you go and sell the plan to the creditors tell them ki bhai itni der tak hum itna paisa aapko wapas de denge agar creditors ko theek laga wo ha bol denge agar nahi laga fir wo normal procedure utilize karenge um why was this considered to be so important is because we were giving the msme sector another chance to get off to fight off this debt and also to make sure till the time they make this plan that they can manage their own industry so that is that the next is your pm pranam scheme now pm pranam scheme is promotion of alternative nutrients for agriculture management yojana simple chemical fertilizers kam karne hai alternative fertilizers matlab jo non chemical uh, type ki cheeze hain jo meri fertile, fertility of the land ko increase kare uske liye humne ye pm pranam scheme banayi so वैसे भी whenever there are fertilizers there are lot of subsidy schemes now the center has said if you do not apply for the subsidy that means you are not utilizing that chemical fertilizer that means you are utilizing another type of nutrient to increase the fertility of your soil if you are doing that if we were supposed to give you 100 rupees for that chemical fertilizer we will give you at least 50 rupees you know 50% of that uh, particular thing out of that 50 rupees 70% you can use for asset creation 
and 30% you can use for your panchayat and to incentivize the farmers so as to not use the chemical fertilizers. We are all aware that chemical fertilizers not only reduce the fertility of the land because we are utilizing a lot of it, copious amounts, and it is also, uh, you know, uh, decreasing the soil fertility. It is seeping into our um, water table. It is ruining our marine life. It is also making our food really bad. That means, you know, our health is also at stake. So, so many things will be uh, will be made better because of this particular scheme. Hame naam learn karna hai. Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers hame pata hona chahiye. And pranam scheme is important for us. Now, the next one is significance of India's ban on broken rice export. Abhi pehle humne padha tha ki wheat export ko ban kar diya. Abhi broken rice export ko hum log ban kar rahe hai. Now, what is this broken rice? These are basically fragments of rice grain obtained by milling. So, we will not export it. Why we export it? Because A, we can use it for ethanol blending because we have been allowed to do that. B, it is also utilized for poultry feed. And the most important thing is we have, uh, we have recorded the lowest rice production of this year and which is why we are going to do this. Iske alawa, India is the world's largest exporter of rice. 41% of the total rice exports in 2021, right? And in descending order, these are the ones who import from India. So China, Senegal, Vietnam, Djibouti, and Indonesia. Ab obviously, if we export nahi karenge, to inko sabse zyada impact padega. So do cheeze, wheat ho gaya aur broken rice export humne ban kar diya. Then comes your liveliness of fingerprints. So you see what happens is in most of the things, so UIDAI is your, we'll talk about it. So it's your unique identification authority of India, which is the agency which is taking care of your demographic and biometric information, like under the Aadhaar card and all. So they have now realized that people are very smart and, you know, they are utilizing other things in place of actual fingerprints uh, to make buddhu out of everyone else. They're making a fool out of everyone else. So liveliness detection is basically going to detect whether this particular fingerprint is from, uh, is real or is it fake or, you know, are they using a spoof? So that is what they have come up with. Baki AEPS is Aadhaar Enabled Payment System. So there are a lot of micro ATMs where you can use your Aadhaar number to make payments instead of anything else, instead of your credit card details or your debit card details, right? The only input is bank ka naam likhna hai, Aadhaar number likhna hai and fingerprint. And so it makes it very, very important for us to uh, make sure that this is like an actual fingerprint and not a fake fingerprint. The next one is SEO tourist and cultural capital. But ye to kar rakha hai na, Varanasi wala. That the first ever SEO uh, tourism and cultural capital. Yes or no? Right. So, um, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay. Shanghai Cooperation Organization has uh, nominated the city of Varanasi as the first ever SEO tourism and cultural capital, okay, at the 22nd meeting of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So this is a very good thing. I mean, we are getting a lot of, uh, this will incre increase our domestic tourism, also international tourism. So, yeah, so we need to know the name Varanasi. Yes, ab hume pata hai pehle isko Benares bolte the and all. Shanghai Cooperation Organization kab bana tha batao? When was when was it made? When was it put into force? Who were the original members? Chalo, itne questions pooch liya, time nahi diya, likho. Basically, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. But we also have to make sure that we are reading everything because by the end of it, we'll have two questions and then we'll have to do that, okay? Shanghai 5 is correct. Then when was Shanghai Cooperation Organization made? Right. So Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. Uske baad India, Pakistan, or kon hai? Good Apurva, right, Iran, correct. Great, Bache, Bhot Badia. Okay, quickly we are going to go ahead and we are going to finish it off quickly. So fast track codes and special codes, um, the law minister is asked to make this. 
दिस इज राधर सिंपल लॉ मिनिस्टर ने क्या बोला है दिस वॉज ऑल्सो रिकमेंडेड बाई दी इलेवेंथ एंड फोर्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन अभी फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन की रिपोर्ट हम लोग देख रहे हैं so uh, fast track courts uh, or fast track special courts they already set up under the uh, poxo act right and um, the functionality is nearly 50% 70% so they have said we should increase it that's all that you need to know over here right uh, also a certain related news supreme court has directed the high court to allow convicts who have completed 10 years of their life sentence to be released on bail and those who have con- completed 14 years can ask for remission remission is basically reducing the quantum of sentence either entirely or partially right so that is something that we have to keep in mind so completed 10 years of their life imprisonment can be released on bail and can be not have to be right and 14 years for remission then comes your e bal nidan portal the one i was talking about in the very beginning so bachi this is your national commission for protection of child rights okay now this was set up in 2007 under the commission for protection of child rights act of 2005 yes these are basic static informations that's okay chairman and six members hote hain minimum money two have to be women over here the chairman the retirement age is 65 years for the members the retirement age is 60 years the term is 3 years what is their mandate just child right protection and what is this e bal nidan portal so basically this is an online uh, portal where anyone if there is anything that is wrong which is happening to a child below the age of 18 years of age hai na so we can file a complaint on this online portal that is what you have to um, understand isse pehle sis application hota tha that was children in street situation so we have broadened the scope of this particular portal and now we call it e bal nidan now important dates and themes for this particular week so 14th september everybody knows hindi divas you've done it n number of times 15th september engineers day for india 15th september international day of democracy the theme is important to do with sdg and importance of media 16th september malaysia day 16th september world ozone day so montreal protocol to 35 years complete or so montreal Pro- protocol at the rate of 35 world patient safety day 17th of september 18th september world bamboo day uh bamboo for green life and sustainable development 21st september international day of peace theme is end racism build peace and world alzheimers day no dementia no alzheimers so all of this is obviously available for you online and um the pdf of this along with some extra points which may have been just told by me and not mentioned over here will be sent to you uh by tomorrow or day after at most all right so you can even read it from there and you can read it from here to make your life a little simpler then comes your um so national crime record bureau has released the prison statistics in india report 2021 so the report has been released in 2022 pertaining to 2021 so overcrowded prisons over 130% occupancy under trials are 77% sc st obc over 67% of inmates highest number of under trials is uttar pradesh less than that is bihar right then maharashtra then transgenders most prisons don't have separate facilities including in delhi for transgenders so that is the report that they have come up with the next is election commission has delisted 86 um registered unrecognized political parties so a is registration firstly to stand for elections it is not mandatory to get registered but it is advisable because you get a lot of benefits like you get the symbols and you know registered political parties can also get a lot of other benefits that unregistered parties don't get registered unrecognized basically means so there are nationally recognized political parties and state recognized political parties the terms and conditions to be that are a lot okay that's a lot of number to learn but basically you know if i have um, got like a lot of very uh, a lot of seats at the state election or i perform very very well in a lot of states then i can become nationally recognized so what have they done they've said there are 86 registered unrecognized political parties 
who are not securing a securing enough votes or they are not even contesting for elections right so if they are not then might as well just not recognize them just delist them then 253 were inactive basically they did not even stand for election so that is what has happened here baki jaise maine aapko bola to election symbols reservation and allotment order 1968 and this uh, the eci gets the authority to declare a party inactive okay now the next thing is fintech incentive scheme of 2022 we are just about to end it in just a couple of minutes let's keep on the josh and let's just stick on to it and then we'll end the entire week and we'll be very happy with ourselves so international financial services uh, centers authority has launched a scheme to provide financial support to financial technology activities ab aim kya hai to have these promote these world class financial technology centers at the gift city gift city is basically of course in gujarat it's written right here to jo bhi inko chahiye koi grant chahiye startup ke liye do you, do they want new technology do they want scientific incubators where they want to come up with different ideas so so as to make sure that you know science and technology moves at a very rapid play, uh, pace in our country all of those facilities then will be given to them now if ifsc karta kya hai it caters to customers outside the jurisdiction of the domestic company okay so like export oriented units karke shayad aapne suna hoga shayad nahi suna hoga chhod do so they are catering to uh, customers who are outside the jurisdiction of the domestic economy and if they can do that and they can increase their innovation innovative capacities look at the amount of money that we are going to make so that is your fintech incentive scheme आप अच्छी इनोवेटिव आइडियाज लेकर आओ हम आपको और पैसा देंगे देन इज डॉक्टर इन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंस सिंपल भाषा में मेजोरिटी व्यू ऑफ अ लार्जर बेंच विल प्रिवेल ओवर अ जजमेंट पास बाय अ लेसर बेंच सिंपल इज दैट All right. So, simply put, the court verdict established that a four to three majority view will overrule a unanimous bench of five judges. You know, because four is to three, that means seven judges की बेंच है वो हमेशा ओवर रूल करेगी इवन इफ पांच के पांच जजेस ने जो एक केस देख रहे थे उन्होंने पांचों ने एक चीज बोली हो सो दैट इज ऑल दैट वी हैव टू लर्न हियर देन इज योर स्केल एप स्किल सर्टिफिकेशन असेसमेंट फॉर लेदर एम्प्लॉज दिस एप्लीकेशन हैज बीन प्रोवाइडेड एज अ वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर द स्किलिंग एंड लर्निंग असेसमेंट एम्प्लॉइंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट नीड्स ऑफ द लेदर इंडस्ट्री so anyone who who needs any problem with uh, who has any problem with respect to the amount of skill that they have they want to increase that they want to learn something new about the leather industry they want to um assess what are the kind of skills required for the leather industry how can we make our industry better all of them can have this certification assessment on this scale app this is under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and india is the second largest producer and consumer of footwear in the world and the leather industry accounts for around 13% of the world's leather production of hides and skins okay now we are done with it we are we are on our two questions now this is on your screen you are going to start writing the answers come on fatafat se read it and tell me so we just did the inspire scheme very simple question so we started off with a very basic level we'll start increasing the level later on but as of now let's let's understand if we are able to apply whatever we've done come on so you're going to okay lalit ka answer aa gaya hai baki sare ke sare bhi fatafat se bacche read it innovation in science pursuit for inspire research inspire scheme manako sorry i should just keep quiet hmm second ka answer third ka answer come on everyone who's online this is very very simple bachche inspire awards theek hai third ka answer bata diya सेकेंड का तो मैंने ही बता दिया पर आप भी बता दो नाउ इट्स फाइन ललित व्हाट अबाउट द रेस्ट ऑफ़ अस कम ऑन 
ठीक है टू ए हो गया मानक तो हो ही गया है ना एंड दूसरा एक्स कैन बी सब्सिट्यूटेड विद विच सो दिस इज डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड हु हैज गिवन दिस इंस्पायर अवार्ड सो दंसर इज डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह कम ऑन रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वेदर आर आंसर आर राइट और रॉन्ग बच्चे वी नीड टू पार्टिसिपेट सो दैट वी नो दैट वी बिन एबल टू अप्लाई आर नॉलेज और नॉट दैट्स ऑल दैट वी नीड टू नो नथिंग मोर ठीक है बहुत बढ़िया लेट्स गो ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन इज दैट ओके द रेस्ट ऑफ अस गिव मी अर थम्स अप एंड देन जस्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड देन वील से गुड नाइट टू ईच अदर यस ऑल राइट देन वेरी वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन let's do this so the national commission for protection of child rights on friday issued draft guidelines for children in the entertainment industry to regulate their participation in films tv reality shows as per the draft rules no infant below the age of 3 months will be allowed on shows apart from promotional programs on breastfeeding or immunization they will not be made to participate in any show that ridicules embarrasses or distresses them and there will be a jail term of up to 3 years and no child shall be made to enter into an agreement by virtue of which the child is required to do any work or render any service under the bonded labor system act so the first ka answer chalo consider the following choose the correct option with respect to e bal nidan scheme it is an online complaint portal developed by the ncpcr where an any person can register a complaint reporting about a violation committed under a uh, against a child the portal also provides the transfer to registered complaints from ncpcr to the concerned state commission bachche both are correct okay both are correct and who is the chairman of ncpcr so this is priyank kanungu theek right then okay i hope we learned a lot and uh, this and maybe something extra than this the things that i have just told you and not written on the screen shall be provided to you you please read that properly and yes that's all thank you very much all the best study hard good night thank you thank you thank you Thank you.